This is the time. Health equity has to be for all, but it has to be effective. That's where we have to take health care, is meeting people where they're at. This is the hard work, this is the right work, and we're all accountable to it. We have to get going. You know, health equity is not doing something radically different than no. what we're called to do as an organization. It brings us right back to who we are. Mm -hmm. We're called to respond to each person and their unique needs. Mm -hmm. To know me, care for me, and ease my way. way. Beautiful, right? I mean, that, that promise statement, to know me, care for me, ease my way, we know that there are disparities of care with those who are, who are vulnerable because of health issues, because of age, because of disabilities. is gonna require us to understand our patient outcomes Amen. by race, ethnicity, and language. We have to be listening to our to our patient populations and be meeting them where they're at. Mm -hmm. It's I, that know me. It's yeah. that like that's the center of it. That's where the data comes in, the yeah. qualitative, the quantitative data. That's where understanding different cultures comes in. Health equity has to be for all, but it has to be effective. And that efficacy is going to show up differently for different communities. And it's understanding the nuances and being mindful of what's going to be effective to make health equity work. This is the time. You right. might be uncomfortable. This might be hard. This is going to be challenging. We're not going to get it right every single step of the way. Right on. The important part is learning from our mistakes and yeah. failing forward. Is this work a sprint or a marathon? In my opinion, this work is both. It is the action, the urgency has to happen. We have to get going. We cannot wait till our data is perfect or until the right dollar amount is allocated, whatever it is. But we also have to acknowledge that this work moves at the speed of trust. And mm -hmm. so regardless of the... Can I use that? Sure. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really good. I like that. This work moves at the speed of trust. That's yes. brilliant. You know, Did we you come up with that I, yourself? I actually, I don't know where I heard That's it. If awesome. I came up with no, it or somebody it, else did. It, it just <laughs> resonates so deeply because yeah. trust is yeah. hard. Yeah. Yes. These inequities have been a long time in the making. And to think that we can just make them right because we're ready doesn't account for the mistrust that is in our communities. And as fast as we want to work, it doesn't really matter until we build that relationship, until we are sitting at a table where people feel like equals yeah. and ready to work together. I would love, Whitney, for you to talk about what's going on in Southern California where we're actually meeting with our community partners at the same table. So, you know, COVID wasn't the first time we had seen inequities mm. in outcomes, right? Yeah. I mean, this wasn't new learnings for us as a healthcare organization. I think it just became so visceral that it could no longer be ignored. And so we need to figure out how we move forward. And I think in Southern California, the first outreach was, how do we help? And it was listening to those communities, the group of 13 churches, um, the historically black churches in LA, and helping them with what they needed, not with what we thought, right? And now that we've built the trust, right, that relationship has continued to evolve. And then now they're focusing in on hypertension. They're using a company called Live Chair Health to do um, blood pressure screens in barbershops and salons, right? Talk about taking care to where individuals are. Talk about building on trust that already exists. Mm -hmm. It's not with us in the clinic, in the hospitals, right? It's at the salon or the barbershop where these black men go twice a month, right? And have a healing, loving relationship with someone that they trust.
this is a lifelong journey that we are all Absolutely. on. This isn't going to be, oh, five years, we checked the box, we've right. eliminated health disparities. I mean, this is <laughs> yeah. going to take conscious effort day in and day out for the rest of our lives. Right on. Yeah. It's an exciting time for every single one of our caregivers to be able to learn, to know our patients, to take that step, to have the permission to look at data in new and exciting ways, to right. go out to the communities and to really allow our services to take that extra step in being welcoming and personalized. Mm -hmm. One of the positive outcomes of the work that we're doing is that we are all going to come and connect and understand, empathize, and learn a little bit more about each other on a very interpersonal level. And that can only raise us all up. Sure, yeah, and health for a better world is health equity for all. Amen. So when that is at the basis and that's the foundation of how we look at quality and how we build our programs, then we've really embedded health equity into who we are as an organization. Agreed. So it's not a question of it starting or ending. It's a question of how do we ensure that it's systematically part of who we are moving forward.